Matilda Swinton British actress Catherine Matilda Swinton is a British actress. She is known for playing eccentric and enigmatic characters, often working with auteur directors. Over her career she has received various accolades, including an Academy Award and a British Academy Film Award as well as nominations for three Golden Globe Awards. Born, November 5, 1960, age 63 years, London, United Kingdom. Partner, Sandro Kopp, 2004. Children, Honor Swinton Byrne, Xavier Swinton Byrne. Height, 1.8 meters. Parents, John Swinton of Kimmergame, Judith Balfour. The iconoclastic gifts of the highly striking and ferociously talented actress Tilda Swinton have been appreciated by art house crowds and international audiences alike. After her stunning Oscar-winning turn as a high-powered corporate attorney in the George Clooney starring and critically lauded legal thriller Michael Clayton, 2007, however, her androgynous looks and often bizarre appeal have been embraced by more mainstream crowds as well. She was born Catherine Matilda Swinton into a patrician Scottish military family on November 5, 1960, in London, England. Her mother, Judith Balfour, Lady Swinton, née Killen, was Australian, and her father, Major General Sir John Swinton, an army officer, was English-born. Her ancestry is Scottish, Northern Irish, and English, including a long tapestry of prominent Scottish ancestors. Educated at an English and a Scottish boarding school, Tilda subsequently studied social and political science at Cambridge University and graduated in 1983 with a degree in English literature. During her tenure as a student, she performed countless stage productions and proceeded to work for a season with the Royal Shakespeare Company, where she appeared in such productions as Measure for Measure. The rebel inside of her, however, was strong and she left the company after a year as her approach and interests began to shift dramatically. With a pungent taste for the unique and seldom tried, Tilda found some gender-bending stage roles come her way. She portrayed Mozart in Pushkin's Mozart and Salieri, and as a working-class woman impersonating her dead husband during World War II, in Manfred Karge's Man to Man, a role she later committed to film, Man to Man, 1992. In 1985, the tall, slender performer with alabaster skin and carrot-topped hair, began a professional association with gay experimental director Derek Jarman. She continued to live and work with the groundbreaking writer, director-slash-cinematographer for the next nine years, involving herself in seven of his often notorious films. This quirky, highly fascinating alliance would produce such stark and radical turns as the Berlin International Film Festival winners Caravaggio, 1986, The Last of England, 1987, The Garden, 1990, and Edward II, 1991, playing Isabella, in which she won Best Actress at the Venice Film Festival, and Wittgenstein, 1993, as well as the film Sour Sweet, 1988, a movie with no spoken dialogue, and the Stockholm Film Festival Award winner Blue, 1993. Jarman succumbed to complications from AIDS in 1994. His untimely demise left a devastating void in Tilda's life for quite some time. Her most notable performance of her German period, however, came from a non-German film. For the vivid title role in Orlando, 1992, her nobleman character lives for 400 years while changing sex from man to woman. The film, which Swinton spent years helping writer, director Sally Potter develop and finance, continues to this day to have a worldwide devoted fan following. Over the years, Tilda has preferred art to celebrity, opening herself to experimental projects with new and untried directors and mediums, delving into the worlds of installation art and cutting-edge fashion, consistently off-centered roles in female perversions, 1996, Love is the Devil, Study for a Portrait of Francis Bacon, 1998, Technolist, 2002, Young Adam, 2003, Broken Flowers, 2005, and Bela Tars The Man from London, 2007, have added to her mystique. Back in 1995, she delved into a performance art piece in the Serpentine Gallery, London, where she was put on display to the public for a week, asleep. Or apparently so, in a glass case. Following the birth of her twins in 1997, Tilda would leave lean for a time towards Hollywood mainstream filming. 
The thriller The Deep End, 2001, earned her a number of critics' awards and her first Golden Globe nomination. Other visible U.S. pictures included The Beach, 2000, with Leonardo DiCaprio, fantasy epic Constantine, 2005, with Keanu Reeves, her Oscar-decorated performance in Michael Clayton, 2007, and, of course, her iconic White Witch in the Chronicles of Narnia, The Lion, The Witch and the Wardrobe, 2005. Into the Millennium, Tilda continued to amaze starring in the crime drama Julia, 2008, and in David Fincher's The Curious Case of Benjamin Button, 2008. She learned Italian and Russian for Luca Guadagnino's I Am Love, 2009, starred in the psychological thriller We Need to Talk About Kevin, 2011, Wes Anderson's Moonrise Kingdom, 2012, and Bong Joon-ho's Snowpiercer, 2013, and earned fine notice in Terry Gilliam's The Zero Theorem, 2013. She also starred in the dark romantic fantasy drama Only Lovers Left Alive, 2013, directed by Jim Yarmouche, had a small role in Wes Anderson's The Grand Budapest Hotel, 2014, starred in Judd Apatow's comedy Trainwreck, 2015, and played a rock star in Luca Guadagnino's A Bigger Splash, 2015. Showing no signs of slowing up, Tilda continues to make creative, visual impressions in such films as the Coen Brothers' Hail, Caesar, 2016, where she reunited with Clooney and had a dual role playing twin journalists, and as the wise Asian teacher of Doctor Strange, Benedict Cumberbatch, in the Marvel Comics action film Doctor Strange, 2016, while repeating the part of the Ancient One in Avengers, Endgame, 2019. She gave another eccentric, unhinged performance in the action-adventure message movie Okja, 2017, played Betsy Trotwood in a contemporary telling of the personal history of David Copperfield, 2019. She personally introduced and showed an eclectic mix of classics and rare films from around the world. The admission price was £3 for adults, £2 for children or a plate of home-baked cakes. Spent two years in South Africa and Kenya as a voluntary worker in children's schools, before studying at Cambridge. Her family and clan Swinton is one of the oldest in Scotland. Daughter of Major General Sir John Swinton of Clan Swinton, whose ancestral home has been within the family since the 9th century, gave birth to twins, a daughter named Honor Swinton Byrne and a son named Xavier Byrne, on October 6, 1997. Learned how to speak Italian and Russian for I Am Love, 2009. On her days off from the Chronicles of Narnia, The Lion, The Witch and The Wardrobe, 2005, she could be seen on set, offering encouragement to her young co-stars. Does not always play women, she has played Mozart on stage, an Elizabethan nobleman in Orlando, 1992, and an androgynous angel, Gabriel, in Constantine, 2005. Attended West Heath Girls School, with Princess Diana as one of her classmates, and later, Fetz College. She has Scottish, English, and Northern Irish ancestry. She can trace some of her patrilineal ancestry back 35 generations, to the 9th century. Her father, Major General Sir John Swinton of Clan Swinton, is the former head of the Queen's Household Division and Lord Lieutenant of Berwickshire. Moscow, Russia, risked arrest waving a rainbow flag in front of the Kremlin in violation of Russia's new homosexual propaganda bill, and posting it widely in social media. Was offered to play Professor Sybil Trelawney on Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban, 2004, but role went to Emma Thompson. Quotes The other day, I was going through the airport security and I was searched by a male security guard. I'm very often referred to as sir in elevators and such. I think it has to do with being this tall and not wearing much lipstick. I think people just can't imagine I'd be a woman if I look like this. I'm basically interested in identity, and I still find fascinating the question, how do we identify ourselves, and how do we settle into other people's expectations for our identity? There is something insane about a lack of doubt. Doubt, to me anyway, is what makes you human and without doubt even the righteous lose their grip not only on reality, but also on their humanity. True, there is all sorts of religious extremism all over the place, but the reason for this partly has to do with the fascist attitudes and language of absolutism coming from Washington. It's challenging for people outside of America that Bush was re-elected.
It means we're all going to have to work a lot harder to understand what so many more Americans than we thought really want. It's an identity shift in our minds about America, and maybe for many Americans as well. I don't work the future, I don't want to know what's coming. I don't feel I need any guarantees. There's such an effort to try and explain people. I sometimes think I was always left-wing. I know that sounds completely crazy, but I do know that I asked questions when I was about four, and I remember noticing that I wasn't getting an answer, and I remember it annoying me. Like why when we went to church on Sunday, were we sitting upstairs, and the people we'd been playing with the day before, were sitting downstairs. And I noticed that my brothers were not asking these questions. I was aware that I was being embarrassing. You're always playing yourself. It's all autobiography, whatever you're doing. It's using them as a kind of prism, through which to throw something real about yourself, or something relaxed at least. Because the last thing you want is to look like you're acting. I think I enjoy my work now even more simply, because it's even easier than it was. It sounds sacrilegious to say that anything's a delight when you're away from your children, but the truth is that it is refreshing to only have yourself to dress in the morning, and to lie diagonally across the bed, making films, going round the world on tour. All these crazy things that were so difficult before, are so much easier than breastfeeding twins for 14 months, that frankly, it is a delight. In order for the story to move forward, the character has to do certain things. You don't have to be anything but interested in telling the story. Thank you.